Lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim with James Jacob Prash, live via Skype from England. Jacob, one of the believers, asked the question, what makes for a good and successful evangelistic open-air meeting? I'm thinking more of meetings held in free Western nations like our own. From the New Testament, particularly the Book of Acts, we can answer the question, what in terms of doctrinal and theological content makes for a good open-air meeting? An appeal to the people based on their religious presuppositions, a affirmation of the historicity of the resurrection, an explanation of atonement, etc. We can answer that question. But in terms of the ingredients of technique for an open-air meeting, as we see in the New Testament, those things vary from time to time, place to place, and culture to culture. Paul did not evangelize the Areopagites on Mars Hill in Athens in an open-air meeting, um, the same way that Peter preached the gospel uh, on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem on Hag Shavuot. It depends on the cultural situation and the social situation, the time and the place we happen to be in. What works in one place, and maybe apropos, may not be the best in another. Bearing in mind as well today, in the modern world, more and more evangelism takes place on the internet via Skype, via YouTube, and, and uh, other such mechanisms. If you would ask me the question for the Western world, what makes for the best open-air meetings, I would point you to a ministry that God has raised up and used that has been very effective and quite experienced at doing it. I would point you to the website of the Open Air Campaigners, of the Open Air Campaigners. They have a lot of experience. They even know with their picture boards what colors tend to invoke what kind of responses in people when they use paints to paint the picture and, and explain the gospel. The Open Air Campaigners are a very good organization, and God has used them, and they are probably the quintessential experts for our time for the type of evangelism you are inquiring about. Why reinvent the wheel? I'm sure I would have little, if anything, to add to an organization as experienced and as good as they are. The open-air campaigners, those are the people you should be asking. Now, I can tell you doctrinally and theologically what a gospel message, what an evangelistic message should contain. But as far as techniques, as far as ingredients, as far as how to, in this case, you're asking for modern Western culture, please talk to the open air campaigners. It's a good organization, a good ministry that God uses. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcasts and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. 
The books are there. They're available. They're available in print for the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.